In this video, we're going to look at replacing the uh, dash cluster, the instrument dial cluster in a Mondeo. When I say replacing, I mean replacing its bulbs. Uh, but of course, you could use the same procedures to replace the, uh, the cluster itself if you needed to, um, or if you needed to get in there for uh, any other reason. Um, here's my one, just freshly taken out. And uh, all I'm doing today is replacing, uh, there goes one now, one of the, uh, these bulbs, because uh, on mine, two of them have blown. Let's get on with it. Getting access to the uh, the cluster bolt so that you can actually take it out is a bit of an exercise in peeling back layers of plastic. And you need to start at the, uh, the bottom of the driver side dash, uh, the sort of um, kick panel that you, uh, you may be familiar with in case of numerous other in-cabin jobs. Uh, this is uh, the one that's held in place with just five screws, uh, three along the bottom edge and two hidden behind the lip of the little flip-out storage box. Uh, these screws are all posi-drive, by the way, um, although pretty much any cross-driver will work as they're not done up tightly. Um, some of the later screws may be Torx T20s. Uh, mine were all posi, um, but I have seen others that have Torx, so uh, you may need a T20 bit. Uh, handy just in case. These are the ones at the top right, uh, hidden under the storage box lip. Uh, once I got them all out, uh, the only thing retaining this panel is a uh, clip at the top left, uh, which can be just pulled straight out and then put it somewhere safe. And having disappeared that, the next bit is held in place with four screws. The first two are easy. Uh, as they're on the outside at um, e on either side of the uh, steering column, as you can see here. Um, and this part is uh, all integrated with the uh, flexible boot that covers the steering column um, and allows the steering wheel to be adjusted up, down, in and out. And to get the last two screws, uh, you have to get underneath that part. Um, it just clips onto the bottom half of the, of the, uh, the plastic shroud, the, um, the steering column cover. And with a trim tool, it can just be pried apart quite easily. Uh, and by the way, I've seen some instructions that say to take off the bottom half of the cover too, but you don't need to at all. So the last pair of screws are sort of hidden in the back um, underneath the, the flexible shroud you can see here. Uh, you will want a nice long screwdriver to reach these comfortably. Uh, they're not that hard to do though, and um, if you drop the screws, they should just fall out onto the floor. So, uh, you know, not back down inside the dash. So, um, nothing too complicated. Once they're out, uh, this part of the disassembly uh, it just pulls out backward, i.e. toward you. Um, but it is clipped in quite well, uh, I found, and if those clips haven't been worked ever, then they might put up a good fight. Uh, they do just pull out, but it can be hard to get a good grip on this part um, because there's just nowhere really obvious to put your fingers to pull. Um, so if you're having trouble, you can actually access them from the back. Um, I'll show you here. Sorry about the shaky footage, but um, this is my phone. It's uh, all that will fit up in here. Um, you can see the right-hand side one. You know, that's on the left because we're looking backward here. Uh, that's the one at the top there. And on the other side, up and around this corner, uh, I'm having to tilt the phone, so, uh, you know, bend your neck. Uh, recessed in there is the, uh, the left-hand side one. So I sprayed these uh, with a little, little bit of lubricant to help them. Uh, you could also mash them with some pliers to get them moving. I'd be careful doing that, though, in case you bend them. Uh, in any case, uh, that, the, the lubricant did the trick for me, and it uh, popped out next time I tried. Here is that piece out of the car. I, I just wiped everything down as I took it out, as it's a good opportunity to do so. And here at the reverse side, you can see those clips. Finally, the cluster itself is accessible. Now, this is a bit of an anticlimax, as it's held in place with only two further screws. Very easy to undo. Um, all the same type, in my experience, the same posi heads. Uh, they're just at the bottom two corners, and once they're both removed, the cluster will be loose. Uh, it can just be backed out. To start it moving, uh, you probably want to get that trim tool up in the top center. Uh, just poke it in the gap and uh, lever it a bit forward like so. And then it can just be gently pulled back uh, until you feel the cable at the back resisting. Uh, just remember that cable, you know, don't, don't go uh, jerking it out. So that cable is plugged in uh, here with a uh, special release clip on it that's actually quite nice. 
as far as these things go. Uh, you need to grip it with your finger and you just flick the catch upward and out and uh, that same action will lever the plug out at the same time. Nice. Okay, so when you've got it out, you uh, are f faced with these on the back. Um, these uh, big blue ones, the light blue ones, are the uh, the larger dial illumination lamps. And then you've got these little grey ones, which are the uh, little icon and um, petrol gauge and uh, um, engine temperature gauge illumination lights. So um, to get them out, they're quite, you can use your fingers maybe, but they can be quite stiff. Uh, if you have trouble, you can use a pair of pliers like this to give it a good grip. And then carefully lift it out. And there you go, you can see. Um, this is a T5 bulb, a 504. However, here's the trick. They are not the usual 5 watt bulbs. They are 3 watt bulbs. And um, the little small ones, it's the same issue. I'll take one of them out to show you. Yeah. So um, I forget the code of these, but these are the little, uh, the, the smaller ones. And these ones are usually 1.3 watts, but these 0.9 watts. So in both cases, they're fully about a third less than normal. And um, that's a bit of an issue because I think many people end up replacing these with the, the sort of more common but more powerful, overly powerful versions when they do this job. So the problem with that is um, if you put, especially with these larger ones, if you put uh, five watt versions in here, you're going to be times four, you're going to be adding uh, in terms of watts, you know, quite a lot of extra power, which means heat and it's heat that tends to ruin the little uh, sort of gel filters and um, things that are going on inside here. So that's very undesirable. And on top of that, it's going to be a lot brighter, like you're talking about it being about 50% brighter. And if you don't have the, uh, the brightness adjustment on the dash, which this car doesn't, then you know, that, that's a bit of an issue if you're uh, driving a lot in the, uh, in the country at nighttime, you, you, because your cluster is now too bright. Um, the other thing you might think about is LEDs to replace these, and I would caution you on that because it's a lot, uh, a lot more difficult than it sounds. There's more to it than you might think. Um, firstly, you do see people replacing them with coloured LEDs, so people want to change the colour. Um, on the, uh, the more sporty Mondeos, uh, where they have a white illumination on the cluster, that will work because you can replace the, the white light with you know, yellow or green or red or whatever it is you want and it'll sort of work. On these ones it won't because they have, the, the, the color is generated by a filter which is inside the cluster. So you get white light from the bulb which is then fed through either a green or a red filter to give you the color. And you can't change that short of ripping all of this apart and trying to muck around with the, the, the filter itself and it's, it's, it's just not worth it. Um, so you, then you might think, well, uh, okay, so you could replace I mean, it's mostly a green dash, right, with bits of red. So you might think, oh, well, I'll just put the green LEDs in uh, because, you know, green light through a green filter will obviously give you green light. The problem is with the red bits, there's hardly any red light in a green um, LED, which means that all of those uh, bits that are supposed to be red will end up completely dark because the, the, the red filter will be blocking all of the green light and there'll be nothing else to get through. So don't do that. That would be silly. Um, so you, you could still use LEDs if you replace this with an LED that emulated it perfectly. So you would need a white LED, um, and, but then you've still got problems because it's very hard to judge the brightness of LEDs when you buy them, these little T5 LEDs. You can try to find an all-around one, but it will have to be actually quite dim to uh, emulate a 3-watt uh, um, uh, bulb like this. Uh, most of them you'll find will just be overly bright and it'll be very difficult to, uh, to find one that on paper is accurately described as being the equivalent of this. Uh, you know, it should, it should generate about 30 lumens and no more. So if you can find one like that, then great, go for it. But I think you'll have trouble. And uh, in my case, uh, I, you know, I can't be bothered mucking around with it. So what I'm gonna do is, even though it's only the two on here that have uh, died, I'm gonna replace all four of them. But I'm not gonna touch these because I, they're all still working and I actually couldn't find any of the 0.9 watt ones. So, here we go. 
By the way, if your car collects dust and rubbish like most, uh, this is probably a good time to get the vacuum or whatever and uh, have a go at all the areas that this job exposes. You know, the little shelves under the cluster and uh, the undersides of panel edges, and they all get filthy and you know, collect dust and stuff and they can now be cleaned. Uh, I also gave the the, the clear the the um, the polycarbonate of the dash cluster itself a good clean while I have while I had good access to it, and then putting everything back together is obviously just the reverse of what we've already covered. So I'm not going to belabor it here. The plug connector just pushes back in and uh, uh, locks with the, uh, the lever. Um, I would turn on the ignition and make sure that everything's working at this point. Uh, you wouldn't want to wait till you're finished and then find that there's a uh, blow and bulb or some other problem. And when you put the screws back in, um, everything's easy, but uh, make sure that you don't over tighten them. Uh, you want to make them snug so that things aren't loose, but you know don't don't really crank on them because otherwise you're prone to uh, cracking the plastic. And make sure that everything's seated properly and don't force the plastic, otherwise you end up breaking things or with weird vibrations and rattles later on. And when you push those clips in, uh, make sure that they're lined up properly and push them in the right direction. You know, if you end up bending or damaging the clip itself because it's in the wrong wrong location when you go pushing on it, then, you know, it, it'll, it'll be ruined and it won't ever hold properly. And uh, with the screws at the back of the shroud panel, I suggest a magnetic screwdriver is your friend here, and as it will uh, let you guide them into place without having to scratch your fingers up. Okay, and uh, there is my freshly lit dial cluster, all, uh, all bulbs fixed and uh, working as they should. So I hope that was helpful. Have fun.